Hello again. Over my years at the bookstore, I got to meet a lot of interesting people. Uh, I'd like to share with you one that is quite remarkable and that he, it, he should be much more well known, but he isn't. I first heard about uh, this individual, uh, Gianni Dodo, who was the, uh, born in Venice. He was the son of uh, the Marquis uh, Diodoro. Uh, and he's descended from Galileo Galilee, the scientist who is so famous in the world of science. Uh, Gianni Dodo's father was involved in the design of the uh, generators that were installed at Niagara Falls on the American and the Canadian side. And uh, Gianni would have succeeded his father as the Marquis uh, Diodoro but that he gave up that to come to America. Anyways, as the story goes, Bill used to come in, uh, Bill Dufty, a friend of mine who was uh, the husband at one time of Gloria Swanson, the actress, used to come into the Mayflower where I managed and uh, his friend Denny Fairchild, who used to work at uh, Mayflower also at one time. But Bill used to tell me about uh, Gianni Dodo and how, how interesting he was and, and how uh, Dodo used to get these phone calls. Like if the scientists uh, that were at NASA were designing something to go into orbit, they, they could either like do all kinds of expensive experiments or they could just call uh, Dodo and ask him what would happen if they used a particular alloy and the uh, shield on the space capsule or what have you and he could just answer him off the top of his head so he was quite a guy uh, he had a PhD in uh, nuclear physics that he acquired while he was in Italy a PhD in engineering and he also got a PhD in uh, electrical engineering uh, here in uh, the United States at Wayne State down in Detroit. And uh, I think he had some other uh, accolades, but uh, you, can, you can look him up online. There's a little bit of information available, like at the Keeley Net, for example. But uh, the reason I'm telling this story is, it, is it, it's, it's fascinating that he did such pioneering work in the field of the human body also as a result of his uh, interdisciplinary training he was called in to uh, consult in various capacities and one of which was to do research uh, into uh, the field of, of cancer and cellular development and so on and so forth and because they were beginning uh, this was back in the uh, 1970s they were looking into uh, the influence of various fields that are described in physics and how they might play a role in uh, cellular health and, and uh, development of various conditions and so forth. And so um, Gianni started looking at the situation and he, he started evaluating it and figured that there must be something going on relative to the, the, the activity of DNA. And he started looking into the effects of uh, longevity. And you can see that a lot of the uh, people that are purported to have uh, long uh, living uh, characteristic that's very frequent, like, for example, the Hunza people in northern Pakistan. Uh, and there were books written about the Hunza diet and all this. And uh, But he figured that, uh, well... That didn't explain it because there were other neighboring uh, peoples that ate the same diet and they didn't get the same result. And so he explored the situation and he realized that they lived in a valley that had a glacier at one end and yet the, it would get very hot up there. So he reasoned that there was something going on between the two extremes of, of temperatures. And he started performing experiments, uh, scientific experiments, and he had found that uh, 
there's a very interesting characteristic involved in DNA that he researched. When uh, an embryo is six years old, uh, the, the DNA, which is a spiral form like staircase, it's the, it consequently rotates. And he had discerned that when it's six weeks old in the embryo, where it's, it's uh, just uh, duplicating like crazy, uh, that there were uh, 34 base pairs per turn, meaning every time that it, it did a rotation, there'd be 34 base pairs. And this was reduced to 22 base pairs by the time the child had reached two years of age. And at the age of 21 years, it had reduced again down to, uh, on average, 14 uh, base pairs per turn. And then uh, it stabilized around age 35 until about 55 at 10 base pairs per turn. And then after 55, it starts to move into where there's only six base pairs per turn and the body begins to degenerate. And so he started doing experiments with, with uh, temperature and he found that there is a, a very uh, beneficial magnetic field that's very unique. It's completely different uh, from the magnetic field that's produced through uh, permanent magnets or electromagnets, but that it was produced from uh, the two extremes of temperature. And so he found that that, uh, that would be the key to understanding um, the health and longevity that's uh, said to uh, be shared by the people of the Hunza. Although it, it must be added that there's people that have gone up there and they say, well, you know, they're not finding that to be true, but modern culture is also encroached into that area. And so they're starting to eat a uh, modern diet too. So uh, it's, it's difficult to assess the situation. But we, we do know some of the longest living people in the U.S. were miners that, that uh, lived in the Rocky Mountains. And people uh, that, are, that are into a paleo diet uh, use that as an example because basically what they would eat would be like uh, bacon and eggs and, and all those types of uh, uh, animal proteins. And they like to attribute their, that their long living is tied into that. And there may be something going on there, but uh, really uh, when you're sitting around a campfire and it's, you know, 10 below zero, and then the campfire is in front of you. You have this, this, this uh, distance between the temperatures. And, and Dodi, Dodo says that it's that dynamic that's produced from the uh, difference of temperature that creates a, an effect that causes the DNA to expand. And, and, and have more base pairs per turn, uh, which could have the effect of contributing to longevity, which is really quite a fascinating thing. And it's amazing that, that he did that back in the 70s and, and did a lot of uh, research the, uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, cancer and so on and so forth. You can find some of that work uh, online, like I said, at the Keeley Net. That's the area I'm not going into right now, but I'm going into the idea uh, that being able to expose yourself to these extremes of temperatures is very, very beneficial. We know, for example, like in Finland, uh, the Finns uh, were very much into the sauna, and they, do, they go into the hot sauna, and then they go out and they roll around in the snow. And uh, that's, that's one example of it. I know when I was a, yet just a young boy at summer camp, we used to go polar bear dipping. The first thing in the morning, they used to get us up and make us jump into the lake. And uh, uh, it was a sense of dread at the beginning. Uh, but after about a week into camp, everybody's like, uh, they couldn't wait. They loved it 
because it had such an invigorating effect. And we, we know, for example, like uh, athletes, a lot of times you'll see them and they're soaking in, in this giant tub full of ice cubes and water uh, because it reduces the inflammation. It's also uh, a wonderful thing for, for uh, losing weight because what happens is it, is it causes the, there's two types of fat, the white fat, which is the not so good fat, and then there's the brown fat. It causes the, the, the brown fat to get motivated because that's the fat that contributes to help uh, uh, reduce or, or to elevate your, your body temperature. Your, your body will burn uh, the uh, brown fat and, and it gets that whole uh, metabolic system uh, accelerating. Also having the added benefit of dilating the blood vessels uh, because uh, uh, the flexibility of the blood vessels is, is totally uh, vital for uh, optimal health. Uh, it's, it's also invigorating and it actually uh, causes uh, an alter alternations within your even uh, within your, your brain chemistry and, and certain somatic centers in the brain. Uh, some of these details, there there's so many of them that I think I'm probably going to have to do more than one video. But what I've been doing ever since, and I got really into the making it a firm habit, is when I began to study yoga uh, when I was in my uh, uh, late teens, early 20s. And uh, part of the regime there was to take your hot shower and then finish off with a cold shower. And so I've done that ever since. So it's been a long time. Uh, and uh, so for over the last uh, um, quite a few years, uh, 45 years or so, I've been doing that as part of my regime. And it's absolutely invigorating. And it's nice to know that the uh, research of uh, Gianni Dodo has shown that there are certain key factors that are involved in this that can have much more far-reaching effects as far as the regeneration of the proper uh, electrical activity uh, and magnetic, electromagnetic activity uh, that's uh, so vital for the proper functioning of DNA. Uh, and that's about it for right now. I think all I'll do is I'll, I'll visit this again and give more details uh, regarding some of the science that does surround it. Uh, thank you very much.